Hello friends, we are still not employed by a fang company, so let's not stop lead coding till we get there. Today we are going to do two sum two lead code problem where input array is sorted. And if you see some of the companies where I want to get a job, we have already asked this question. There are companies like Amazon, Apple, Uber, Google, Facebook, Bloomberg, Microsoft, and Goldman Sachs. So that's why I'm paying my utmost attention. I hope you also enjoy the video. This is a lead code medium problem and also a very well like problem. Uh, this two sum two problem is actually very similar to the two sum problem which we originally solved over here. So you can check it out that solution if you want. Now let's understand this problem statement. So basically we are given a one index array and this is only given one index just to add some additional complexity or uh, nothing more than that. Uh, and we are also given an array of numbers. Now we are told that all the numbers they are already sorted in non decreasing or ascending order. Now we need to find two such numbers that they add up to a specific target and we are also given this target value as the input for our method as well. Now uh, we need to provide the index values for those two numbers as the answer. So let's try to understand this with couple of examples. So if we take this example one and two over here, I have drawn it much bigger over here. So first of all, we are given a numbers array like this. And if you notice that the indexing is actually starts from one uh, rather than starting from zero we are also given some target value so in this case the target value is 9 so now we need to find any two values that sums up to 9 so we can clearly see that 2 plus 7 equals to 9 uh, and in this case we need to return the index value of this 2 and 7 so the answer in this case is going to be 1 and 2 as the answer uh, if we take second example over here we are given the target value to be 6 so clearly we can see that 6 is going to be the sum of actually 2 plus 4 now remember we can also do over here like 3 plus 3 but the thing is we cannot repeat the same character again so in this case the answer has to be 2 plus 4 uh, that equals to 6 and uh, we need to return the index value so in index values in, in this case is going to be 1 and 3 and this is going to be the answer so after understanding the problem statement, let's see that what are going to be the different approaches to solve this problem. So the first approach that comes to our mind is the brute force approach. Uh, in the brute force approach, what we can do is we can simply take every single possible two pair that we can make and try to see that whether we can come up with the target value for those two pairs. If we do get the target value, we simply return their index numbers. So in this case, we uh, we are given the target to be 11. Now we can make different pairs that looks like this. That first of all, we'll take the first number and then we will make all the uh, possible pairs. Uh, we don't find any sum that comes up to 11. So we can ignore this one. Now we'll start with the second value and keep on repeating the same process. So the moment we do that, when we do the sum of this 5 plus 6, we get 5 plus 6 to be 11. And this is the answer. So in this case, we can return their index values. So in the index values in this case is going to be 2 and 3. And that is that would be the answer we can return. Now this brute force solution leads up to the correct answer uh, in terms of the index values that we are looking for. But the thing is, this is not the most efficient way to do it because we have to deal with lot of different uh, sub arrays or sub pairs. So if we see time complexity for this brute force approach, it, actually, it is actually big of n square because for every single value, we have to compare it with all the other remaining values and that is pretty disastrous. So let's see that what is going to be the better approach. Okay, so the next approach that comes to our mind is a binary search. Uh, why binary search? Because remember, we were originally told that this input array we are given that is uh, already a sorted array, which means all the values that they are sorted in ascending order. So we can actually use binary search to our advantage in order to find the target value pair. Uh, the approach I'm suggesting is that first of all, we take any value. Okay, so the current value in this case is true, right? So if we have if two is supposed to be part of this answer, let's imagine that two is part of this answer, then two can oh, two can only be part of the answer if uh, the value 11 minus two equals to nine. If this nine is somehow present inside this given input array, we can clearly determine that two and nine can be part of the answer that leads up to the target value 11. So all we need to do is uh, once we identify the value number two, we come up with the remaining value that is needed to generate the answer that is nine. And then we can simply do a binary search in this case to see that whether nine exists or not. We can find this immediately in log n time uh, because this array is already sorted. So at any given moment, all we have to do is just calculate the middle value and see on which side of this middle value does this nine falls. And eventually that would lead up to the current correct answer so first of all if we see for this value number two nine does not exist right so because nine does not exist we can ignore the case for this value number two and we can define that two is not part of solution that leads up to the target value 11 
now again we are going to repeat the same process now the next value we have is 5 so now if the value is 5 uh, all we have to do is to see that what is going to be the remaining value and remaining value in this case is going to be 11 minus 5 so 11 minus 5 is equal to 6 so now we only have to check that whether the 6 exists inside the remaining array or not and that we can do using the binary search in log n time so now what we will do is we will try to find the middle value let's say that middle value in this case is 12 so 12 is greater than 6 so because 12 is greater than 6 we only have to compare between these three values so again the middle value is 8 again 8 is still greater, greater than 6 so now we only have one value on the left of the 8 and right of the 5 so uh, which is already 6 so immediately we can find that value and because we find both 5 and 6 to be existing so 5 plus 6 equals to 11 we can simply return their index values to be 2 and 3 so uh, 2 and 3 is going to be the answer in this case if we see binary search actually works pretty better than uh, our brute force approach why because if we see if we try to calculate the time complexity in this case the time complexity is actually going to be big o of n log n why n log n because in the worst case we might have to iterate over every single character in order to find the target value and uh, for uh, us to find the remaining value we have to do log n work so again if we see this uh, solution this solution is much better compared to our brute force approach which had the time complexity of big o of n square uh, now the question is is this the most optimal way to solve this problem and the answer is no there is still one more solution that can give us the answer in big o of n time Okay, so the optimal solution I am proposing is actually using two pointers. So suppose this is the array input array we are given and we are given the target value to be 13, right? Now we already know that uh, 6 plus 7 is going to be the answer. But let's quickly see the approach I am suggesting. Basically, we are going to have two pointers left and right. Now remember, all the values that are on the right side of this left pointer are actually greater than this value of left, right? And same way, all the values that are on the left side of this right pointer is actually less than whatever the value at right pointer we had. So the idea is, originally we are going to do the sum of this left pointer and right pointer. We are going to compare that sum to this target value. Now, if the sum is actually greater than target value, which means we need to lower the sum. How can we lower the sum? We can only lower the sum if we move this right pointer on the left direction. Because remember, all the values that are on the right uh, that are on the left of this right pointer they are actually less than this right pointer so if we reduce the values automatically sum is supposed to go down and that would lead us to that would lead us near the target value right again same way if we identify that sum somehow is actually less than the target value if sum is less than the target value which means we will have to increase the value of the sum how can we increase increase the value of the sum by increasing the value of the left pointer because all the values on the left pointer are actually greater and right pointer will remain constant in that up that case and if we keep on repeating the same process until we come up to the sum that equals to target value eventually we would get the two pointers located at the correct position that would lead us to the correct answer uh, how let me quickly show it to you and by the way let me also mark the indexes in this this case as well so now we have our left pointer and we have our right pointer and we have the variable sum right currently left is equal to 2 and right is equal to 42 if we see sum of these two sum is actually going to be 44 44 is definitely greater than 13 so because 44 is greater than 13 we have we will have to somehow reduce the values so what we are going to do is we are going to update the right pointer to move one point to the left side right so now our new right pointer is going to be this one so now our right pointer value is 21 so 21 plus 2 is still going to be uh, 23 now 23 is again greater than 13 so because of that we are going to shift our right pointer again so now right pointer is at 12 12 plus 2 is 14 14 is still greater than 13 so again we are going to switch our right pointer so now right pointer is at position number 10 so now the right pointer value is 10 so now 10 uh, 10 plus 2 is equal to 12 so 12 is not greater than 13 is actually less than 13 so now we will have to update our left pointer so if we update our left pointer our left pointer is going to become value number 5 right so now this value is 5 5 plus 10 is again 15 so 15 is again greater than this value number 13 right so now again we are going to switch our right pointer to go one point to the left so now the right pointer value is actually 7 so if we do 7 plus 5 7 plus 5 actually gives us the answer to be 12 right so now this 12 is still less than the value number 13 
so because this is less than the value number 13 again we are going to update the value pointer of the left pointer so now left pointer is at position number 6 right pointer is at position number 7 6 plus 7 is equal to 13 which is exactly equal to whatever the target value we had and that is the correct solution so now basically the positions of left and right pointer we simply need to return that as the answer so the answer in this case is going to be 3 and 4 and this is the correct way to solve this problem now what is the benefit of this approach well if we see we are actually computing everything in just single iteration we are not doing multiple repetitive work so if we see time complexity in this case the time complexity is actually going to be big off and which is a much better improvement compared to our brute force approach and also our binary search approach uh, if we see space complexity in this case the space complexity is actually going to be constant because we are not using any additional space apart from storing a couple of variables which is also a good sign now let's move on to the coding so first of all we are going to initialize the two variable left and right now we are going to run our while loop that while left is less than right now inside the loop first of all we are going to check that whether the combination of left and right if that is greater than the target value so if that is the case we will have to reduce the sum which means we will have to reduce the value of the right pointer so right is going to become right minus one else if we are going to check that whether the sum is actually less than the target value if that is the case we are going to update our left pointer to go one step to the right that is not the case which means we are actually at the correct position so we can simply return uh, the index values but remember we are presented with one index array so we are going to add one value to the left and right and this was just the additional small complexity they added to the problem otherwise it would have been too simple and uh, basically in this loop we are taking care of everything so we should have gotten the answer if somehow we get out of the loop without returning the answer we can simply return null that we were not able to find the answer and that should do the trick let's try to run this code okay seems like our solution is working as expected let's submit this code and our code runs decently efficiently compared to a lot of other solutions in terms of time complexity in terms of space complexity it's actually pretty efficient because we are not using any additional variable to store the sum uh, and that's it uh, let me i would be posting this solution in the comments so you can check it out from there thank you